I haven't vlogged in a while, so I thought I'd come on. Hopefully I can come on again later when I'm a little bit better, but I'm not doing really good right now. Um, Monday, today is Wednesday, the 9th, so on Monday, I get a call in the early morning, early for me, 7.30. My daughter, my youngest daughter's uh, car wouldn't start and her husband had already left for work and he asked me if I would drive her to work. So I jump out of bed, which is never good for me, never. And uh, went and got her and started driving her into the city. And as we're doing that, I get a text from my husband that the house, that, um, the facility where my mother stays called to say that they had just taken her by ambulance to the emergency room. So as soon as I dropped off my daughter, now mind you, I'm just in clothes. I have not brushed my teeth, washed my face, put anything. So I have to drive out of my way. I have to drive all the way back home from the city, you know, clean up, grab something, uh, a yogurt, get a some water and back in the car to drive another 25 minutes or more the hospital is even farther away than where she lives to be with her I guess extreme anyways long story short um, she's in congestive heart failure um, not too uncommon for somebody in her age group but Never seen her like this, never seen her this week, never seen her this bad. Yesterday, so I've had, I went up again yesterday. I mean, they admitted her pretty quickly. And then I went up and spent time with her again yesterday. And she was a little more talkative yesterday. She's on oxygen. She's catheterized. Um, she's not, I don't believe this is going to take her. But she said to me, I think that I, I feel like this is the beginning of the end. And she's never said anything like that to me before. And it's all on me. I mean, my sister would love to be able to do more. She lives in Massachusetts. You know, my brother lives in Iowa. It's all on me. Kids got their life. So I'm not going to, you know, and, and they got kids and work. <laughs> all on me I told my mother yesterday boy the Lord got me into a car right at the nick of time because if I didn't have a car mom I wouldn't be able to come up here I'd have to wait for Sid to get out of work every night and come up for very you know now that I have a car you know he knew to get me into a car when I had to but um my daughter <sighs> you know the kids text me every day what's going on, want an update, and I have to call my, my sister and my brother and update them, and I have to call my uncle, her, my mom's brother, who lives in Manhattan, and update him. He was almost ready to get in the car and drive here today, but I told him, no, no, no. Unless things happen that I know that, oh, this is not going right, you don't need to rush up here, especially if we're getting a snowstorm in the next 24 hours. And again, thank God I have an all-wheel drive SUV. But um, my stomach's hurting this morning, and I don't know why. I didn't take any olive leaf or oregano, but my stomach is really... I think it's the stress, because the nurse had to call me twice last night to calm my mother down, because she got a little feisty, actually. So that's a good sign. Last night she got a little feisty, and... She didn't have any feist in her on Monday. Um, but I woke up pretty bad this morning, which is never good when you wake up really bad, you know. All your symptoms just flooding over you, and you know you've got a lot to do, and I've got to. I'm going to go get on the treadmill. I was able to walk outside. The last couple of days, it actually was up in the 40s. Now, it's 
you know, four to eight inches in the next 24 hours, cold, mixture of rain, snow right now. So I'm going to go get on the treadmill. I'm going to get cleaned up. I'm going to get something to eat. And then I got to drive the 25, 30 minutes. Actually, it's more than 30 minutes. What am I talking about? It's 30 minutes to her place, so it's a little bit farther than that. It's probably 40 minutes drive. Highway, too, by the way. All uh, highway. Well, most of it is highway. Um, to go be with her again. And I started to say, so my younger daughter last night was texting me, you know, what's going on? How's it going? And Mom, how are you? How are you feeling and doing? And I said... I'm hanging in there, and I'm just doing it. I don't have a choice. If I was hooked up to some machines and flat on my back, I guess that would be my choice, but I'm not. So I don't have a choice. I have to be there. As crappy as I feel. You don't have a choice. You have to do what you have to do. And if it kills you, it kills you. Right? I, I always say that. So, uh, boy. Been on the increased LDN for going into my second week. I'm going into my second week that I've been I haven't really seen a huge change yet, but whatever it does, it does help me. I will say that it does help me. I, I'm just gonna say it does help me, because I don't know. I, I know I was worse before I started the LDN. I was much worse. So prayers for my mom. She's ready to go, and I'm glad that since I moved her to the memory unit that she's in, the facility she's been in since July, um, our relationship has changed dramatically. And I'm so thankful that the Lord allowed that to happen because I was so bitter and angry and just aloof to her prior to that. And she is shown love and care as much as she can in her mental status state um, that it will be hard to lose her of course but I haven't even yet gotten over my mother-in-law my mother-in-law passed away a year ago in October and it still seems very fresh to me and I was very close to her and I was telling my daughter, I just, I'm not ready to do this again. And I lost my brother that same year. Same year I lost my mother-in-law, I lost my brother. And um, and when and if, well not if, but when the Lord decides to take my mom home, it's all on me. I have to take care of everything. I have to take care of all the, everything. So guys, just try to put your your feet in my shoes for a minute. How much of what I'm doing could you do? Probably not a whole heck of a lot. I don't have a choice, so I'll check in with you later. Bye. Hello. Yep. Yep. Driving to go see my mom. I did the treadmill. Head is pretty woozy, but not so bad that I know I can't drive. I can drive. Just, I've driven like this a billion times. Um, in my new car. I don't know much. Let's see. There, there, how's that? My new car. Um, so, just wanted to let you know I'm on the road. sitting by the edge of your seat waiting to hear that, but I'm on the way and
and I don't I don't feel good at all. Even a little bit do I feel good, but like I said earlier, you gotta do what you gotta do. Pay for it. My daughter gave me a little teeny teeny. She sells uh, essential oils and you know this little trial teeny bottle of frankincense so I've been using it very sparingly you know just drop behind both ears I don't know if it's helped or not it's hard to tell but I have used it the last three days when I right before I get in the car Let's see if it helps with the my head at all maybe it has so um, I might think about pulling the camera out and video with my mom when I get there. We'll see. Bye. Okay. Oh, it's not. That's mom. Mom, say hi. I look like hell. Do you feel like hell? Pretty much. She looks like hell and she feels like hell. Can any of us relate? I can. <laughs> That's you, Mom. I know. I don't need directions. She doesn't need directions. Okay, just wanted to let you know. She's up in a chair, at least. She's sitting up. They're going to have to um, do a plural... Um, oh, golly. Come on, Lainey. The nurse should know the terminology. She has plural effusion in both lungs. And, um, well, I can't think of the term right now. I can't either. They go There's in a with a needle. I'm not familiar with. Oh, God, I'm, <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. They go in with a needle and extract the, some of the fluid, but they can't do that till tomorrow due to the fact that they gave her Lovenox, which is a blood thinner this morning, and so she's a risk to bleed. So we wait. But. That's her. She's at least sitting up in a chair. But she doesn't feel any better. And I sure don't look any better. <laughs> oh, sorry. It kind of let out on us. Um, it's a thoracentesis. That's the term that I couldn't come up with. What are you doing now, Ma? Wiping my nose. Oh, first. she's wiping her nose. What does it look like? What's it look like? So... The thoracentesis cannot be done until tomorrow once the, the blood thinner has left, left the building, so to speak. So she will be here, and they can only do one lung at a time, so tomorrow they'll do the left side, and on Friday do the right. So she will be here until next week, at least. You sure sound... Interesting and enthusiastic. Hi. Um. What can I say? Uh, my, my mom started getting really feisty as the afternoon leaned on and by four o'clock, she was getting very, she was sundowning. I want to go home. I don't belong here. I don't have my things. What did you do? The old Donna Jo from when she lived alone was back. And there's nothing I can do. I told the nurse, don't call me tonight. I can't do anything on the phone. I can't fix it. And calling me just stresses me out, so. Um, so, I the snowstorm has started. All the way home. Snow plows everywhere. Sanding the roads already. Snow is already starting to come down, but they're sanding because it's supposed to get really... Icy and slippery, too. The temperature's plummeting because everything's so wet from the rain. It's not a good mix. 
And I have to be back up at the hospital tomorrow because she's going to have her thorns and thesis done. But my head never cleared today. Not for a minute. Which was rough because, you know, you put on this fake and I'm talking to the cardiologist and I'm talking to the PA and I'm talking to the nurses and dealing with my mom and I'm just the whole time feeling like I'm going to pass out or I'm going to have a stroke. Or, you know, your brain just feels so bad. Um, you had to really concentrate on driving home. Find my um, my reaction time. I think it's changed, like when I'm trying to change lanes, when I'm driving um, with my new car, you know, it will tell me if it's not safe, even if I don't look. A light blinks on my rearview mirrors if a car is too close for me to change in the lanes. Um, and it has the blind spot mirror so it's even checking my blind spots but I still because it's habit you want to turn and when your head's already woozy I just feel like I'm not as fluid when I'm trying to change lanes because my brain is not catching up does that make sense I don't I'm really, this is day three, day three of this, and it's catching up to me, I fear, and I, she won't be going home anytime soon because they can only do one lung at a time, so they'll do the left lung tomorrow, the right lung on Friday, I don't know when she'll get out of there. And then can she even, you know, does she need to go to a rehab? So that's my day, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I just want my, my head to clear. I just needed to, I mean... It was very tensed up because when you when your head's like that, you I tighten, I tighten all this because I feel so off balanced, and that just causes so much pain. And now I got pain all the way up the back of my head, and so much pressure, like right here, like it's gonna just explode up. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Oh, man. So, thanks for sharing your time with me. And, uh, Lord willing, I'll be back at it again, if this even downloads. God bless.